Hey everybody, this is our video solution to problem 2 from quiz 5. Here we're being asked to compute a double integral, and it's already in iterated form, fantastic. And you'll notice that the uh, y coordinate goes between 0 and 1, but the x is actually as a function of y, right? It goes between the square root of y and the constant function 1. And so, okay, fine. We might say, okay, let's first take an antiderivative of the square root of x cubed plus 1. But we're not going to get very far doing that. Uh, of course, there is an antiderivative. The problem is this does not have an elementary antiderivative. Right? So no elementary antiderivative. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means if you do write down an antiderivative, it's not just going to be a function composed of the, the usual functions that you know of from, say, pre-calculus. Polynomials, uh, exponential functions, logs, trigs, and, and quotients of these types of functions. So there is none. Uh, if you don't believe me, well, okay, let's ask Wolfram. Okay, so I punched it into Wolfram, integral square root of x cubed plus 1, and look at this amazing mess. You have x times, and then, oh my goodness, what is this, 2f1? Well, this is what's called a hypergeometric function. This goes back to Gauss. It is not going to be an elementary function. It's actually defined in terms of an integral. So this is not going to be super helpful to us, and we're going to want to find a different approach. So let's head back. Okay, so one of the techniques we learned in class is that if you have some function and you don't really want to integrate it, but we're working inside of a, an iterated double integral, we might try to switch the order of integration, and sometimes that can be very helpful. So let's, let's try that here. So the first step is going to be to take the domain of integration and write it down explicitly. So if we are going to write this as, say, some domain d, and let's do it in set builder notation. This would be all points x, y, where we know the y goes between 0 and 1, and the x goes between the square root of y and 1. Now, since we are given y explicitly, and then x is bounded between functions of y, this is what we called a type y region. I think in the book they call this maybe a type 2 region, which I don't really care for because I can never remember which one is 1 or 2. So I like to stick with the letters. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, let's see. Next thing I'd probably want to do is graph this because my goal is to turn this into a type X region, which is how I'm going to switch the order of integration. So let's go over to the side a little bit and try to graph this. So the Y is going between 0 and 1, so let's put 1 up there. And now the x is going to be bigger than the square root of y. So let's just write this. x greater than or equal to the square root of y. Uh, since y is going to be something positive, um, the square root of it will be positive. x will be positive, so I can square, and I'm not losing any information. So x squared is going to be greater than or equal to y. Ah, y is less than or equal to x squared. I know that function, right? So this looks like a parabola. Okay, and I get up to 1, that must be actually when x is equal to 1. So there's your x-axis, there's your y-axis, and this is y equals x squared, right? Or equivalently, uh, x equals the square root of y. All right, now, uh, which region are we looking at? Well, remember, the y is always going to go between 0 and 1. The x is going to be greater than or equal to the square root of y, so it needs to be above this line, uh, or rather, above this way, right? So we're looking at the x coordinates. So the x has to go, starting from any particular point, it'll be greater than that, and it'll go all the way up to 1. So I'm looking at this region under the graph and up through 1. Okay, so I'd like to rewrite this region, that's my d, as a type x region. So... In this case, now I know my x-coordinate first, and it can go anywhere between 0 and 1. And my y-coordinate, so for any particular, say, we had a little a here, well, the height is, well, this is x-squared, so this would be a-squared. So the y can be anything above 0, but it has to be less than this curve, so it'll be less than x-squared. 
So my y coordinate is bounded from below by 0 and above by the square of whatever my x coordinate is. So this is writing it as a type x region. All right, so now by Fubini's theorem, I can rewrite the original iterated integral, which we know is equal to the double integral of x cubed plus 1 uh, dA over this region D. By Fubini's theorem, this double integral can be rewritten as the integral from 0 to 1 along x, and then y is going to go from 0 to x squared. And then I'll have, again, the square root of x cubed plus 1. But now we'll do dy dx. OK, now let's see. We didn't get rid of the x cubed plus 1 square rooted, so have we really made a, a difference? Well, yeah, because the first integration is now with respect to y and not with respect to x. So this entire integrand is actually a constant now. right? So we're going to evaluate this, and it's going to be very, very easy, because I can actually even just pull this out, right? It just becomes a constant. So I actually get an integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of x cubed plus 1. And what's left over here, I'm just integrating 1 dy, right? After I pull this out, I'm just integrating 1, which just means I get the length of the interval, which is x squared. And this makes a huge difference, because whereas before all I had was the root x cubed plus 1, now I have an additional product, right? an additional factor here, times an x squared, which is going to let me do a substitution. So I'm going to make the substitution u equals x cubed plus 1, so that du is 3x squared dx. OK, I don't have 3x squared, but I'm just going to pretend I do. right? I'm going to cheat and put a 3 in here. Of course, we don't really get to cheat for very long. OK, we have to uncheat. We'll put a 1 third out front. Uh, now I'm going to want to also switch my bounds. So let's see, when x is 0, my u, well, let's see, when x is 0, I get 0 cubed plus 1, which is 1. And when x is 1, well, let's see, when x is 1, I get 1 cubed plus 1, that's 2. So that means that my integral can be replaced by the integral u goes from 1 to 2 of, let's see, this will now be the square root of u, which I'll write as u to the 1 half. And then 3x squared dx, this just becomes my du. OK, this should be pretty easy to finish now. Uh, let's see, an antiderivative for u to the 1 half. Let's see, you had 1, that's a 3 halves power. And then you got to uh, divide by 3 halves, so that'll be the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And we have to evaluate between 1 and 2. So let's see, that's going to be 2 ninths times, all right, uh, 2 to the 3 halves, that's going to be the square root of 8. And then 1 to the 3 halves, that's just 1, so minus 1. And there we go. So we start with an integral that we cannot compute because there is no elementary antiderivative. And yet, by just viewing the region as an x region instead of as a y region, we are allowed to use Fubini's theorem to swap the order of integration. And then all of a sudden, by some magic, we get an antiderivative that we can compute with just a little bit of substitution. That's the beauty. I love it. All right, we'll see you next time.